There are a lot of weapons in Albion Online, and it can be hard to figure out what weapons to focus on or main. So in this video, I'm going to go over every weapon in Albion and show you what it is good for and typical uses in the Albion meta. Starting us off, we have the Curse Staff weapon line. Curse Staffs are ranged weapons that rely on high damage over time effects to slowly kill off opponents. First up is the One-Handed Curse that consumes damage over time stacks to do a big burst of damage. Its main uses come in solo, open world PvP. Next we have the Great Curse Staff which excels at putting the damage over time curses on many enemies very quickly and it is mainly used for small group PvP. Demonic Staff is the next on our list and uses a powerful fleering ability to push enemies back. It is mainly used for solo to mid-scale PvP content. Next is the Cursed Skull which is effective against all types of enemies with its percentage max HP true damage. Its main use comes in solo PvP and small scale group PvP. Life Curse Staff is a strong utility staff that purges all buffs of an enemy in an AoE. Its main use comes in a supportive role for mid to large scale PvP fights. Next is the Damnation Staff which applies a powerful piercing debuff to enemies in a large AoE. Its main use is in Zerg vs Zerg large scale PvP. Last but not least is the Shadow Caller, which is a tricky staff that's effect depends on its target. Its main use is for very high level, late game PvE. Next we have Arcane Staves, which are a support oriented weapon line that use buffs and debuffs to help their allies. First up is the One-Handed Arcane Staff that has the ability to purge off all buffs of enemies in a small AoE. Its main uses come in a supportive role for mid-scale PvP and can also be used for solo PvP. Next we have the Great Arcane Staff which has the ability to freeze time, rendering allies and enemies alike immune to all effects. Its main use is in large-scale PvP as a defensive support, preventing your allies from taking damage at critical times. Next is the Witchwork Staff, which has the powerful ability to pull enemies together into a tight group. Its main use is in mid- to large-scale PvP fights, either as a supportive role or as a DPS role. The Occult Staff is a unique item that lays down a carpet to speed up allies and slow down enemies. It is used as a utility role for large groups, usually in PvP situations. Next is the Enigmatic Staff, which applies a powerful reapplying shield to allies in an AoE. Its main use is in large-scale PvP content as a supportive role. The Malevolent Locus is the next weapon in the Arcane Tree, which cleanses all allies of debuffs within a large AoE. It mainly serves as a defensive support role in large group fights. Last but not least, we have the Evensong, which applies a versatile debuff to enemies in an AoE. Its main use is in small to mid-scale PvP fights, either as a supportive role or as a DPS option. Our next weapon line is the Frost Staves, which are a utility and damage hybrid weapon line that can utilize a blink ability to outmaneuver opponents. Starting us off, we have the One-Handed Frost Staff, which freezes enemies in place in a cone. Its main use is for solo and small-scale PvP as a DPS option. Next, we have the Great Frost Staff, which rains down waves of icicles dealing damage in an area of effect. Its main uses come in fame farming and small to mid-scale PvP. Glacial Staff is the next one on our list and it sends out a long-lasting ice shower that deals heavy damage over time. Its main uses are for large group PvP and small-scale PvP when it combos with a partner. Next is the Icicle Staff which lays down an ice storm that slows opponents in a very large AoE. This staff is mainly used as a defensive support in large-scale PvP to slow down enemy zergs. The Hoarfrost staff shoots out a snowball that can explode and stun enemies. Its main use is in mid-scale PvP as a DPS option. Next is the Permafrost Prism, which stuns enemies in an AoE and then deals damage. 
Its main uses come in mid to large scale PvP as a DPS. Last but not least, we have the Chill Howl staff, which freezes a single enemy in place and then deals damage to them after a delay. Its main use comes in solo PvP. Next on the list we have Fire Staves, which are a pure damage option with strong damage over time and area of effect effects. First up is the one-handed Fire Staff, which shoots out a fireball that explodes on impact, dealing lots of damage in an area of effect. Its main use comes in solo and small scale PvP. Next is the Great Fire Staff, which has a low cooldown ability to deal medium damage in an area of effect. Its main uses come again in solo and small scale PvP, and also in solo fame farming. The Wildfire Staff is the next one on our list, and it shoots out a burning fireball that deals percentage HP damage over time. The Wildfire Staff shines best in solo to mid scale PvP. Next is the Infernal Staff, which puts a fiery debuff on an opponent that deals damage and leaves a fiery trail behind them. Enemies who come into contact with the fiery trail take damage and are silenced. The Infernal Staff shines in mid to large scale group PvP. Next is the Brimstone Staff, which rains down a meteor from the sky and hits for very large damage in an AoE. The Brimstone Staff is mainly used in large scale PvP. Next we have the Blazing Staff, which summons a fire tornado that deals heavy damage over time in an area of effect. This is mainly used for group fame farming. Last but not least, we have the Dawn Song, which summons a fiery phoenix to swoop down and burn your foes, dealing damage and debuffing their healing. It is mainly used in mid to large scale PvP. Next on the list is Quarter Staves, and Quarter Staves are utility tank weapons that knock around, debuff, and interrupt opponents. Starting us off, we have the normal Quarter Staff, which lets you vault at a target, knocking them up. It is mainly used in solo PvP. Next, we have the Ironclad Staff, which allows you to spin around, knocking enemies away constantly. This is mainly used as a tanky disruption weapon in small scale PvP. Next is the Double Bladed Staff, which lets you leap long distances and slow enemies in an area. Its main use is to gank targets that aren't looking to fight back. The Black Monk Staff is the next quarter staff on our list, and allows you to throw out a spinning staff that debuffs enemies, reducing their damage. This is used as a tank weapon to control enemies in small scale PvP. Next is the Staff of Balance, where you conjure a storm around you, debuffing nearby enemies and reducing healing. Again, it is a tank weapon to control your enemies in small scale PvP. Next is the Soul Scythe, which shoots out a small tornado that knocks up enemies and slows them when they land. It is used as a tank weapon in large scale PvP. Last but not least is the Grail Seeker, which has the ability to let you slam down two beams of light that root all targets caught in them. Its main use is in large scale PvP as a defensive tank to hold back enemy lines. The next weapon line on the list is the Daggers. Daggers are a slippery weapon line with high amounts of mobility, specialized for melee DPS players and assassins. Starting off, we have the one-handed dagger, which allows you to augment your auto attacks, making them deal heavy damage and heal you at the cost of your own life. Its main uses come in solo PvP, raid level PvE, and soloing PvE bosses. Next we have the Claws, which allow you to lock down a single target and deal heavy damage. This is a specialty ganking weapon. The Dagger Pair is the next on our list, which has the ability to attack and burst down a single target, dealing heavy damage and then damage over time. It is good for solo and small scale PvP. Next is Bloodletter, which has a quick thrusting dash that executes opponents who are at low HP. The Bloodletter is used in all forms of PvP. Next on the list is Demon Fang, which allows you to slash up to three times in a cone in front of you, dealing heavy damage. Its main uses are in mid to large scale PvP. Death Givers are the next dagger on the weapon line. These are a slippery weapon, allowing you to dash through opponents, turning invisible for a short period. They are mainly used in solo and small scale PvP. 
Last but not least, we have the Bridled Furies, which slash out in a big AoE in front of you, dealing heavy damage and propelling yourself backwards. They are mainly used in large scale PvP as a DPS. Boasting the longest range of all melee weapons, Spears are a versatile melee DPS weapon line suited to many situations. Starting off with the one-handed spear, it has the ability to dash forward quickly, damaging and knocking up opponents along its path. The one-handed spear is sort of a jack-of-all-trades solo weapon, good for fame farming and solo PvP. Next we have the pike, it has the ability to slam down on a single opponent, dealing heavy damage and rooting them for a long period of time. It is most commonly used in solo and small-scale PvP. Next is the Glaive, which has the unique ability to pick an opponent up and fling them behind you. It is mostly used in small-scale PvP as a tank weapon or as a DPS weapon. Heron Spear is the next spear on the list, and with the Heron Spear you have the ability to throw out your spear, stunning enemies in an AoE. It is good in small-scale PvP as a melee DPS option. Next is the Spirit Hunter. With this ability, you throw out a spear, dealing damage in a line and piercing enemies' defenses. It is good in large-scale PvP and solo or group fame farming. Next on the spear list is the Trinity Spear. With the Trinity Spear, you can leap out, dealing damage and rooting opponents, and when you land, you get a buff for yourself and nearby allies, increasing attack speed and movement speed. It is mostly good for solo PvP. Last but not least, we have the Daybreaker. With the Daybreaker's ability, you dash forward, purging all the buffs off of enemies in your path and dealing damage. It is good for solo PvP and solo fame farming. Bows are a simple ranged DPS weapon line that deal good damage from a long range. Starting us off, we have the Normal Bow, which has the ability to augment your attacks, stacking up to being strong, quick attacks that eat away at enemies' defenses. It is good for solo and small group PvP, as well as raid level PvE. Next is the Longbow, where you shoot down a rain of arrows in an area of effect. The Longbow is strong for fame farming and large group PvP. Next on the list is the Warbow, which has a short cooldown skillshot arrow that deals damage based on how far it has flown. It is great for solo PvP. Next is the Whispering Bow, which augments auto attacks, increasing their damage and range. However, it also makes you take more damage while it's active. It is good for ganking and solo PvP. Wailing Bow is the next bow on the list. It shoots out a large piercing arrow that deals more damage the more enemies it hits. It is used best in large-scale PvP. Next is the Bow of Badon, which shoots out an arrow that creates an electrical field, dealing damage and interrupting casting of the things it hits. The Bow of Badon is very good for group fame farming and also solo PvP. Last but not least for our bows, we have the Mist Piercer. The Mist Piercer shoots up to four magical hawks that deal damage at a long range. It is mostly used for large group PvP. As close range fighters, Wargloves are a weapon line with high damage and crowd control effects who like to get up close and personal and brawl it out. Starting us off, we have the Brawler Gloves, which have the ability to knock up enemies in an AoE dealing damage and also reset your cooldowns. They are used mainly in solo and small scale PvP. Next is the Battle Bracers, which allows you to rise up into the air before slamming down out of range dealing damage. Their main use is in solo PvP and ganking. Spiked Gauntlets are the next Warglove on the list, and they deal a burst of damage in an area of effect, which increases in effect the more tanky your target is. They're a great option for fame farming, and also for large group PvP. Next is the Hellfire Hands, which have the ability to summon a fiery boulder that bounces three times, dealing damage and reducing healing. They're mainly used in solo PvP. Ursine Maulers have the ability to repeatedly strike enemies in an area of effect cone in front of them, and it also does a burst of damage depending on how many times an enemy is hit at the end of the channel. Their main use is for mid to large scale PvP. Next is the Raven Strike Cestus, which have an ability to slam down and enlarge AoE around you, dealing damage and knocking up enemies. Their main use is in large scale PvP. 
Last but not least for our War Gloves, we have the Fists of Avalon. The Fists of Avalon combo two abilities together, one jump that knocks up enemies, and another a big punch that deals damage and purges buffs. They're mainly used in solo PvP. Crossbows are a ranged weapon line that can deal heavy damage if you find the right situation. Starting us off, we have the Light Crossbow, which has the ability to put a bomb on an enemy that explodes after a short delay, damaging them and all other enemies in an AoE. It is good for solo fame farming and small to mid-scale PvP. Next is the Heavy Crossbow, which has a simple ability to shoot out a bolt that interrupts casts. It is mainly used for solo PvP. Next we have the Crossbow, or more commonly referred to as the One-Shot Crossbow. The One-Shot Crossbow has the ability to snipe down and deal heavy damage to a single target after a short channel. It is good for solo PvP and picking off opponents in all scales of group PvP. Next is Bolt Casters, which rapidly fire bolts against a single target, ramping up in damage over time. They are good at solo PvP and raid level PvE. The Weeping Repeater is a crossbow that lays down a landmine on the ground that deals big damage in a large area of effect if an opponent triggers it. Its main use comes in large group PvP. The Siege Bow is the next crossbow on our list and it shoots out volleys of high damage arrows that deal percent HP damage. Its main use is in large scale PvP and group fame farming. Last but not least for crossbows, we have the Energy Shaper, which shoots out a high damage, slow moving beam that melts enemies. Its main use is in large group PvP. Hammers are a crowd control based weapon line that excels at stunning targets and locking them down. Starting us off, we have the One Handed Hammer, which stuns enemy in an area of effect around you. It is mainly used in small-scale PvP. Next is the Great Hammer, which has the ability to dash forward, stunning any enemies that you come into contact with. Again, its main use is in small-scale PvP. The Pole Hammer is similar to our first two hammers. It slams down in a line, stunning enemies, and its main use, again, is small-scale PvP. Next is the Tomb Hammer, which summons a skeleton hand from the ground to stun enemies in a small AoE. Its main uses are in solo and small scale PvP. Next is the Forge Hammers. With the Forge Hammers, you can become a giant, slowing enemies in an AoE around you and gives the ability to slam down your hammers to knock them up. It's mainly used for solo PvP or as a defensive tank in large scale PvP. Next on the hammer list is Grove Keeper. It has the ability to leap up and then slam down in a large AoE, providing a very long stun. Its main use is in large-scale PvP as a defensive tank. Last but not least for hammers is the Hand of Justice, which has the ability to spin around, pulling enemies near you along with you, and then knocking them up. It's mainly used as an offensive tank in mid to large-scale PvP. Swords are a simple melee DPS weapon line that has quick move speed when attacking enemies. Starting us off, we have the Broadsword, which has the ability to jump towards a target enemy, dealing damage. It's mainly good for solo PvP. Next are the Dual Swords, which allow you to jump towards and knock up enemies in an AoE, which then augments your auto attacks to deal bonus damage. Its main use is in solo PvP. The Claymore is a two-handed sword that allows you to dash to a target enemy, damaging them and stunning them. Again, its main uses are in solo PvP. The Clarent Blade is a sword that lets you shoot out a magical blade that can apply different effects. It's mostly used in mid to large scale PvP. Next is the Carving Sword, which allows you to dash forward and pierce enemies' defenses. It's used in all skills of PvP and also in group fame farming. Next is the Galatine Pair, which allows you to slam down your swords, creating shockwaves that deal heavy damage in a large AoE. It is mainly used in large group PvP. Last but not least, we have the Kingmaker, which has a two-swing combo, the first one knocking them up, and the second one slamming them down, dealing heavy damage. Its main uses are in medium to large scale PvP.
Maces are a tank-based weapon line with various debuffs and ways to control enemies. Starting us off with the one-handed mace, it has the ability to jump forward and stun enemies in an AoE. It is mostly used for PvP anywhere from small to large groups. Next on the list is Morningstar, which has the ability to dash and then to root enemies in an AoE, usually used for large-scale PvP. Next is Heavy Mace, which has the ability to silence and purge enemies around you, useful in small to large-scale PvP. The Incubus Mace is a weapon with the ability to debuff opponents in an AoE, reducing their max HP. This weapon is the go-to tanking weapon for any fame farms in a group or raid level PvE. Next is the Bedrock Mace, which has the ability to summon a Wall of Wind, which knocks enemies back. It is mostly used in solo PvP and large group PvP. The Camelin Mace shoots out a projectile that attaches to an enemy, and after a short delay, pulls all enemies around them into the center. It is mostly used in large group PvP as an offensive tank. Last but not least, the Oath Keepers summon a Wall of Light, which buffs allies with a large shield and augments your auto attacks to heal nearby allies. It is mainly used for solo PvP and large scale PvP as a support. Axes are a melee weapon line that debuffs enemies with bleeds, reducing their healing. Starting off with the Battle Axe, it has the ability to throw out your axe, dealing damage and healing yourself. It is mainly used for solo PvP. Next is the Great Axe, which allows you to spin around in a circle, damaging everything around you. It is mainly used for solo fame farming and anywhere from small to large group PvP as a melee DPS. Next is the Halberd, which has the ability to hit enemies in a large AoE around you, applying a bleed to everybody hit. It is most commonly used for large-scale PvP. The Carrion Caller is an axe that shoots out this raven-like projectile, which damages enemies and reduces their healing. It is mainly used in small-scale PvP. The Infernal Scythe has an ability to slash around you two times, executing low HP opponents. It is mainly used in small to large group PvP. Next is the Bear Paws, which have the ability to quickly jump forward, striking enemies in a cone in front of you for max HP true damage. Bear Paws are commonly used for solo ganking. Last but not least, in our Axis tree we have the Realm Breaker, which has the ability to jump up and then slam down in a small AoE, knocking up, dealing damage, and reducing the max HP of all the enemies hit. It is used in all sorts of group PvP and raid level PvE. Ending us off, I'm going to cover the most unique weapon lines, which are the healing weapons in Holy and Nature. Both weapon lines are used for every sort of content, from solo to large group, so deciding between the two is really up to personal preference. Holy does more burst healing and has cast times, whereas Nature is much more fluid, allowing you to move and heal at the same time, with its healing being healing over time. Looking at Holy Staves, the one-handed Holy has the ability to heal a single target and possibly buff your healing and is mainly used for solo content and small-scale content. The Divine Staff has the ability to give a single target a large shield and heal them, and is mainly used for small-scale content. The Life Touch Staff allows you to channel a heal on a target ally, making it useful for small-scale content. The Redemption Staff has the ability to cast a healing ball that bounces around between allies, healing them whenever it touches them. It is mostly used for small and mid-scale content. The Great Holy Staff is also used for small and mid-scale content, and has the ability to heal allies in an AoE around it while knocking back enemies. Next is the Halifall, which has the ability to jump in the air and then heal targets at a landing location while knocking up enemies. It is used all the way from small-scale content to large-scale content. Last but not least is the Fallen Staff, which has the ability to heal many allies in an AoE for a big burst. Its main use comes in very large-scale content. On the nature side of things, it is much simpler. For solo and small-scale content, you have a couple options. 
the one-handed nature which has the ability to heal up to five allies in an aoe around you the great nature which puts a buff on an ally which heals them every time they take damage the druidic staff which can heal up to two individual targets and lastly the iron root staff which has the ability to connect two players giving different buffs and healing depending on who is connected for mid-scale to large-scale content, you have the Wretched of the Nature staffs, starting with the Wild Staff, which puts down an AoE that heals allies over time who stand in it, the Blight Staff, which channels an AoE around you, which heals people who are close to you, and then lastly, the Rampant Staff, which sends out a heal over time in a line in front of you. Okay, and that is all of the weapons in Albion Online, a basic introduction to them and what they are typically used for. I hope this video helped you get your start in Albion, and if it did, do all of the things that you do to YouTube videos, and make sure you subscribe to see similar videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.